Joining me now, Wade McMullen, he's the managing attorney at Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights. And we wanted to talk about Donald Trump's attempts to block foreign workers from coming into the country. Wade, welcome to the show, we appreciate you coming on. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. So tell us, I mean, Donald Trump has tried to block people from coming into this country from the minute he started running back in 2015. Obviously, talking about a total ban on Muslims until we figure out what the hell is going on. I don't know if he's figured out what the hell is going on yet, but he's tried to block different immigrants in different ways. What is his latest attempt when it comes to foreign workers? Sure, so like you said, this is part and parcel of the nativist white supremacist agenda from the very beginning of this administration. Even dating back to Stephen Miller's agenda while he was an aide for Senator Sessions to essentially shut down all forms of immigration to this country to preserve what nativist and white supremacist main goal is, is their you know tenuous grip on a white majority of this country. Um, and so we we have to you know start there and seeing what is behind this. But but you're right, this is this is new. This isn't separating families at the border who are seeking asylum or anything like that. Um, now they're attacking a, a guest worker program, a worker program for foreign workers um, called an H-1B visa. Uh, this visa is reserved for what they called high skilled workers. Um, typically people with advanced degrees who go work for tech companies or big consultant firms. Um, they come here on a three year visa, they can extend it for three more years. Um, and these are the workers that you know, along with some um, seasonal uh, H2B non-agricultural workers uh, and some international student visa, um, you know, post-grad workers that they are now trying to shut down as as well. So let me play the role of Stephen Miller here for a second, if I could bear it. Um, it you know. What they say is, hey, wait, look, uh, these are high paying jobs that should go to Americans. And so uh, that's what we promised our voters. We said we were gonna keep these jobs uh, at home. Well, why should we let these foreigners come in and take these good high paying jobs? Well, first of all, you're, the answer to that is, you know, Stephen Miller, if you really cared about workers in the economy, if this administration cared about workers in the economy, you know, they wouldn't have passed a, you know, a wholesale, um, you know, tax break for corporations and, you know, defunded, you know, continue to defund the social safety net and and things like education uh, and opportunity um, that actually, pres- that, you know, allows workers to have an education and to grow in their earnings um, over the years. So that's the first thing to respond with is if the economy, if US workers are actually your concern, let's fight for unions, let's fight for jobs, let's fight for education and the conditions that produce good employment in this country. Um, but we know what Stephen Miller is all about. He's all about a white supremacist nativist agenda to shut down immigration and preserve a racial hierarchy uh, in this country. Um, the problem is Democrats for a long time have left left um, things, that left programs like this H-1B visa program unexamined, right? Uh, and so we have to be able to push back as well, not cede ground to the nativist agenda that Stephen Miller and the Trump administration have, but to also be able to critique the H-1B visa program, right? So the H-1B visa program does let corporations off the hook to pay lower wages to high skilled workers coming in from abroad. Um, and we should be asking hard questions like, why not um, require corporations to pay more in taxes so we can fund an education system to educate the workforce right here at home uh, instead of letting them off the hook to pay the taxes and then allowing them to subsidize you know lower salary jobs with foreign workers. So it's a legitimate critique from the left that gets marginalized in mainstream democratic um, conversations and particularly now when we're doing so much to react against the just blatant racist nativism coming out of this administration. You know, sometimes we're ill-equipped uh, on the left to actually push back with nuance on where we should be pushing. Okay, I like this interview. Nuance broke out. Uh, so, <laughs> um, quick question, and I'll get to uh, who actually runs this country. Um, how many workers does this affect? You know, it's a good question. So uh, the administration itself is saying the ban on worker visas combined with uh, a a similar ban on extending um, uh, restrictions of the issuance of new green cards is gonna keep as many as 525,000 foreign workers out of the country for the rest of the year. Um, uh, This is also including spouses, 
of workers, you know, workers for you know international corporations. They can't transfer offices now to the United States if they're foreign born. And so, so as many as half a million workers are going to be prevented from coming into the United States. Um, this year, according to the administration, inclusive of H-1B, H-2B, J-1 visas, uh, and the green card um, restrictions. Actually, let me follow up on that a little bit because that's a that's a big number. And so, um, I I've seen uh, and covered the stories where people say, "Oh my God, you know, we we don't need these farm workers or the meat packing plant workers that are coming in sometimes undocumented." And they'll uh, do a raid, uh, usually in a, a southern state. Uh, they'll kick those people out, and then the economy will collapse, and and they literally won't be able to find people to replace them, uh, American workers to replace them. And they'll they'll panic, and then they'll bring them back. Okay, um, is that true in the in the tech market and the high end uh, that a lot of these H one Bs um, are, are in? Because it's a totally different market. Do we really have half a million? Uh, educated Americans who could fill those jobs and, and we're, we're just not giving it to them? Yeah, so, so to be clear, the half a million marker includes um, you know, lower skilled uh, seasonal workers in tourism and hospitality as well as grad students who are seeking employment temporarily and spouses and green card seekers too. So the H-1B high skilled uh, is usually capped around, it varies per year, but recently in recent years it's been capped around 65,000 per year. Plus nonprofits, colleges, government research agencies, um, are able to, um, you know, aren't subject to that cap, so they can bring in workers as they see fit. Um, but it's a really good question to ask, and and I think it brings up. So on the one hand, yes, you know, our education system in this country is failing the American workforce. You know, we're not producing the level of skills needed for all of the tech jobs and opportunity there is in this country. And and if you want to get at creating jobs, we need to fund the education. We need to you know remove student debt. We need to allow the American workforce to transition away from you know outdated economies to the one that is governing the world right now. Um, uh, and so absolutely we should be doing that. Unfortunately, we just don't have that right now. And so uh, we have to be wary of corporate interests lobbying for this visa to remain in place because it does allow them to pay lower wages. But at the same time, they're off the hook from paying taxes to funding the education system that would produce the workers and the skills to fill those jobs. Yeah, when you don't have a, a, an intelligent solution and one that's well thought out and planned uh, and and works towards a long term solution, what you get is a blunt instrument uh, done for nativist readers, reasons like Trump and, and Stephen Miller are doing right now. And and when you do a blunt instrument, you're gonna screw it up in 18 different ways, right? You're gonna block people you shouldn't block, you're gonna let in people you shouldn't let in and on and on. And so, uh, but the people who really don't want to fix the system overall is actually not Trump. That's a different category as we just discussed. The folks who don't wanna fix it are corporations. Because they have access to lower wage workers, whether it's high end or low end, right? And so, isn't it true that whether it's the Republican Party or the and the Democratic, but not or and the Democratic Party, that we haven't fixed this in decades, not out of accident or negligence? It's because corporations are the largest donors to the Democratic and Republican parties. We haven't fixed it on purpose. We had an expressly racist immigration system, um, you know, in the 1880s with the Chinese Exclusion Act, followed by the, you know, national origin quotas in place in the 1920s that essentially took the racial makeup of the U.S. at the time and proportioned visas according to that to maintain the racial hierarchy. You know, in the 60s when we uh, liberalized the immigration system uh, and a lot more black and brown and other immigrants started coming to this country. The downside to that was that we created this hierarchy of, you know, there's a good way to come, a legal way, and an illegal way. Um, you know, and like you said, corporate interests benefit from that division. You know, from the framing of immigration as a problem to be fixed instead of a boon to the economy. You know, I know of no moral framework that exists on this earth until you start to wade into nativist and nationalist territory that says. I'm going to prevent a human being from seeking a better opportunity for their lives because of the arbitrariness of where and what time they were born on what side of river or what side of a fence, right? And so, 
if we would stop seeing immigration as a problem, framing it as that way, you know, if Democrats would, you know, stop just opposing Trump's performative physical border wall, um, but also stop saying we need to militarize and secure our borders through a smart wall, which means more surveillance, more militarization, more criminalization, then we'd actually get to the root causes of what's broken in our immigration system. Stop seeing it as a problem, seeing it for what it is, an immoral decision to keep people away from opportunity and a free pass to corporations to exploit workers. So if Trump wins reelection, is this even going to happen? Uh, the reason that I ask that is, Trump likes the politics of being against brown people who are immigrating into this country. But every once in a while he huffs and puffs, but then he seems to pull it back as soon as the, his corporate donors tell him, hey, boy, that's not what we put you in office for. So I'm putting it in a harsh way, but it, how much truth is there to that? You know. Like I said, this has been on Stephen Miller's agenda, the nativist agenda um, from the get go. They want to shut down all immigration to this country because they know they can't pass a Muslim ban and have it stand. They can't just ban Mexicans and brown people and have it stand. So their goal at this point is to shut down all immigration. So sure, there's corporate overlords that want to exploit labor, um, but there's also a very racist white supremacist nativist push that is fueling the Trump campaign and administration. And so we can't discount that. All right, Wade McMullen from the Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights Group. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, we really appreciate it. Thank you for shedding a light on this issue. Appreciate you, take care. On the go, don't worry, we got you covered. You can still listen to TYT at our new podcast network. Find us on Apple Podcasts, the Google Play Store, or at tyt.com slash podcast.